Okay, well here we are back in Caves of Cud. For those of you following this playlist in real time, I know you probably assumed that I had forgotten about this character. But I've not. Just been busy with other games and uh, haven't really haven't really been playing any roguelikes uh, for a while. It's been three weeks since I've played this character, so I'm probably going to get him killed. Let's see, I've got 134 skill points. I believe I was saving that up to bump up butchery. Because I am having quite the food problem. We've got a little bit of star apple and a little bit of vine wafers. And um, I want to do a little bit of trading with Tam here. So let's see, you got lead slugs and shotgun shells. I'm going to buy the bear jerky and the vine wafers. And I believe that that is about it. did a little bit of checking before I started recording. I'm trying to get myself on the right track again. And I think I'm going to keep everything else that we've got. So we'll offer that up. It's just four drams of water. That'll have to do. It's not going to keep us sated for very long. Um, I don't really have any quests I want to work on. Um, I think we're just going to go ahead and wander around and explore until I get myself killed. We already know that the jungles are a pretty big death trap for me. So let's see. What do we got? I haven't explored a rusted archway yet, or we could try to make our way to Golgotha, even though I'm not sure that's going to be any more friendly to us. No, I don't want to go to those ruins. I think Golgotha is going to be quite a horrendous place, and I'm already out of food. Wonderful. I'm down to four Witchwood Bark. I'm famished, and it is 10 p.m., so of course it's going to be completely dark out. So where is... Do I have... Surely I have... have a torch somewhere. Musket... No... It's not under tools. Tonics... Did I really go back out here with no... Oh boy, I did, didn't I? Okay, let's see. Jump a recoil. I'm just gonna use that well, I, I don't need to equip it. Um, let's... I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> what are my commands? What are my, what are my keys? What do I press? I think we want to... Here. We'll activate this. We can't teleport with hostiles nearby. This is not how I want to die. Which would... No. I... Let's see, Shade Oil, what did that do? You gain the ability to phase out of the Spaddle Dimension, no. Sphinx Salt, immune to confusing attacks, peer into the near future. Uber Nostrum, it's for healing. Rubber Gum, I don't have any that allow me to see in the darkness. Well, this was an awfully dumb maneuver. Oh boy, we're gonna step to the south. It's blocked by Shell. The boar hits us. It doesn't penetrate our armor. Um, I have no idea where it is. There we go. It's over to our side. We strike at it and kill it. We auto-butcher it and pick up some boar meat. Um, so you know what? Let's just sit here for a few turns. It's 12 a.m. and we're going to sit here and cower in the grass until the sun comes up. We're probably going to get killed here. All we can hear are creepy sounds from out in the darkness, echoing over the landside, the landscape, and we're starving. We have to find food instantly. Another board charges at us as the morning sun rises, illuminating us and making us an easy target. We butcher some raw meat from them, from that one. We launch off of his corpse and land on another boar, wrestling it to the ground. We slit its throat and butcher some more meat from it. Um, you know what? I guess here is as good a place as any. We'll kick open these doors and just continue looking around. I can't go down into the caves until I, I go back and get a torch from somewhere. Another boar charges after us. We pick its body up and devour it whole. And a honey skunk charges around the corner at us. I'm so hungry I'll even eat you, honey skunk. We butcher it. Unfortunately, there was nothing left after our violent assault. So what do we got? A hide chef hermit, a boar, and another honey skunk. 
Um, see if I can get them to come through the toxins there. Not really wanting to fight all of them. Another board charges from the east. We'll either eat well this morning or we're, we'll dine in hell. So let's see, a hide sheath hermit, easy hostile. He's got steel longsword and spiked gauntlets. We swing at him. Gla we glance off of his armor. A honey skunk sprays all of us. The hermit retches and gags and falls down dead in its funk spray. His body slowly dissolving in the acidic mist. We chop down the honey skunk and we wrestle another boar to the ground, butchering it, picking up its body. And we have ourselves a little bit of bacon for breakfast. And we butcher another boar. We'll pick up his corpse. It does weigh a lot, but we're going to be eating it soon. I'm just going to rest until I'm almost healed there. It is 10 a.m. I want to clean out these runes. That way, whenever I do come back here, we don't have to worry about anything. We'll waste most of the day here, actually. We're going to backpedal. We fight this boar one-on-one -on -one in the hallway as two tortoises stumble forward and lumber after us. We chip through one shell and then get to work chipping through the next one. Um, you know what? Can I carry that boar corpse? Yes, I can. So we have another bloody boar corpse draped over our shoulders like some type of sick trophy. We're going to eat it anyways. A honey skunk charges through the burst down door and sprays its funk in the area. It is easily dispatched and we'll just sit here while the mist clears. A boar charges through and he's blinded by the acid. He dives onto our blade and we quickly dispatch him. Got a whole bunch of stuff up here, but a prickler on the wall. Let's see. It's almost dead. It's a spiny, bulbous plant. It's covered in sharp quills. If it feels threatened, which it always does, you can expel them with a sharp puff. And it's filled us with them. We'll just sit here and rest until we're healed. It's 3 p.m. There's a bunch of junk back here. Metal sheet, cracked lens, burnt capacitor. What a nice, what a nice little stockpile. We're just going to pick up all this. Cracked lens, can I pick up all those? Let's see. I'm going to have to break all that down once we get back to Joppa. Was there something? Did I just pick up a bunch of stuff in that doorway, too? I think I did. We got a ton of scrap from this place. It's a shame I don't have that many... Um, I don't have anything I can build with it, actually. I'm going to need to get better butchering, I think, and find some of those rare items. These are all pricklers lining the hallway. We're going to try to find our way around them. So I don't have to fight them. May not be able to, though. And a boar was waiting around the corner. We slam his face into the wall. And then dispatch his buddy around the corner. Looks like those rooms are empty. It's fine by me. It's 8 p.m. It's night time. Um... We're going to re recall back to Joppa real quick. Do we want to go to Joppa? Look at all this stuff. Actually, let's break that down, too. Got a ton of stuff to break down. Burnt capacitors, corroded circuit boards, cracked lens, felled energy relay. I think I've actually had that for a while. And a bunch of fractured microchips, too. I really need to get a lot more money and start buying some of those blueprints. Maybe this character won't die. I don't know. I'm still not going to be playing it too often. Roguelikes have kind of wore me out for a while. Let's see, we'll activate the recoiler, and we're transported back to Joppa. So here we are, it's 8pm, the town is as bright as ever, and... Okay, there's Tan. I can't see him in the darkness until I step inside his, his little establishment here. See, I want... I want to keep my boar corpse. I'm going to buy all of those torches, actually. Is there anything I can sell? I don't I don't think I picked up anything, actually. No, I did not. I want the pony up nine drams of water for the torches. That's fine. He doesn't have any additional food for us because his stock has not been replenished. And um, I think we're going to go out hunting for a little bit of food real quick. So let's see. Torches are under tools, right? Tools. Tools, tools. Where are torches kept at? Did I have torches earlier? Some of you... It's under the light source. No, I didn't. Okay. I was going to say, some of you, if I did have torches, some of you would have probably yelled at me earlier. 
already. So let's see. Do we have any witchwood trees around here? I'm gonna go with no. That was that puddle of acid down there, I believe. Um, I think I might have passed one. No. It's 2 a.m. and we're just picking our way through the open fields here. There we go. Let's see. We harvest 10 star apples from that tree. And we're still not hungry, so it's going to... Uh, it's actually, we might actually be able to make a stockpile here. The, my only, the only thing I hate about this is that it, if we travel on the world map, we eat through our food source so quickly. Uh, I don't think star apples grow here. Out in the swamps. Um, you know, we're just going to keep running this way. We run head first into something and we slaughter it. I think it was a crocodile. It didn't stand a chance. We were running full tilt, weighted down to the hilt, and with blood in our eyes. Uh, let's see, there's a witchwood tree. No, I, I've got plenty of witchwood. Well, actually, I, how much witchwood? I have only four witchwood. Hey, there we go, jackpot. We failed to harvest anything useful. The apples that we did harvest were completely bug-eaten and rotten. They fell to mush in our hands with sickening larvae squirming around inside each nugget. Could follow the road to the southeast there. What is this? Well, for one, it's a bunch of snapjaws. We better get to work. The snapjaw brute charges, and we clash with him, his attacks glancing off of our armor. Two chameleons and another snapjaw come after us. We chop them all down one by one. Let's see. He drops a copper nugget. I'll take that. And the leader makes himself known. We chop down another salamander. And their leader steps forward. Ulumobu, the learned snapjaw bear baiter. Let's see. He's got a bronze two-handed sword. He's easy. We should be able to quickly dispatch him. We get to work. And quickly the snapjaws are are on top of us, crawling off of our shoulders. We grab one by the neck and slam him down on the ground. The other we slam into his friend, turning them both into a crumpled mass. To the south we have... It was an important snap job, but he was quickly killed too. So let's see, we got copper nuggets. Now, how much weight do I have? I can carry about 100 pounds. So we'll take the iron battle axe. I'm not going to take any more bows for the time being. There's a tortoise corpse about an iron battle axe and an iron mace or whatever I picked up there and the iron mace it was a lacquered something and we'll pick up that iron mace start stocking up on iron of course I'm not gonna waste my time with bronze if I can help it I don't have a high enough ego anyways to make them worth anything just a few drams here and there we knee that snap jaw in the chest and he collapses we finish him off with a flick of our sword there's no one left out here. Or is there? No, just the wildlife, apparently. Two more salamanders crawl out of their holes, trying to get bites on us. They don't succeed. So it looks like we're back in the canyons, huh? Got an iron mace we pick up there, and a fire burns. Oh, ooh. Hello, merchants. The snapjaw scavenger doesn't hit us. Where are you going? I've got some things I'd like to trade with you, friend. He's got some carbide plate armor, chainmail, flexivest, a fullerite plate mail, strange tubes, tiny trinket weird artifacts, no. Taco Suprema. I would still love to have one of those. But I don't know when that dream will ever come true. Um... I wouldn't mind buying another chem cell just because... Folded carbide long sword, a fullerite short sword, and a carbide shield. Wow, there's some pretty fancy stuff here. I got 65 drams I can offer up. I don't have much of anything to offer. Could offer the shotgun up, that wouldn't give us enough for anything. Acid grenades I'll keep. I'm going to keep the missile, simply because I, if I find a missile launcher again, I'm going to use it before I die. We'll sell the Witchwood Wreath, too. Well, I can't buy any of that stuff, unfortunately. I can... 
I don't know if I... Well, you know what? I'm just going to offer this up and get some drams from him. He'll have to pony up 66 drams of water. That's fine. My water is now up to 164, and you know what? Unfortunately, we'll have to part ways like that. I hate that. I would love to have bought some of that stuff. A sharp iron dagger will pick that up. Ooh. And some more star apples. We harvest ten of them, and a snapjaw ambushes us from around the corner. So we're busy picking them. He gets one good blow on us, and then we quickly dispatch him, too. Like a gnat. Let's see. Ring mail, a skull conjector. I'll take that. And I don't need any of that other stuff. I think a skull conjector will actually let me see at night, won't it? I gotta find out. I think it's one of those injectors. It's gotta be the skulk. Let's see. Our movement speed is reduced by 20... Increased by 40 at night and underground. We can see in the dark. A radius of 8. Okay. That's my backup. Just in case I ever, for some reason, run out of torches. And do something dumb like that again. I've got no idea where we're at, but we're just going to keep exploring. A boar ambushes us from around the corner. And we butcher him along the wall there. And take a piece of his meat. The horned chameleon charges after us. We snap his horn off. Dispatch him too. What do we got? A tortoise? Hello, friend. Now we're surrounded. They fall to our blade. Foolish wildlife. Are they really that hungry or are they just territorial? We'd have to do more research to find out, and quite frankly, there's no time for research out here. We'll just have to kill anything that bothers us. Hey, there's another star apple tree. And we failed to harvest anything useful again. That one apparently hadn't grown into season yet. Um, you know, we'll pass a few turns here. We eat some raw boar meat while we set under the star apple tree. There we go. And the sun begins to rise. We're going to stay here for just a little bit. We harvest ten star apple from that tree. And there's dragonflies flittering all around the place. There's probably an oasis around here somewhere. Let's see, now we'll harvest that one. We get ten more star apple. There's a lot of star apple trees here. Wonderful. Apparently there's a lot of snap jaws too. They didn't see us catching rest underneath those trees until we started moving. Then they picked out our shape and gave chase. There's a hunter. Uh, let's see, can we wait for him around the corner? There we go. We give chase after him. And he starts to fall back, but we lunge and catch up to him, catching him by surprise. Pulling him down to the ground, we butcher him. And you know what? We're just gonna... There's another Snapjaw Hunter coming from the south there. We'll wait a few turns. Um, yeah, they're probably gonna come after... There we go. The Snapjaw Hunter lunges over the tree. We split him in two. And he sails off to the side. Behind him appears a snapjaw brute. We charge, lunge off of the tree using all of our strength, and collide with the brute. We dispatch him without much of a fight. And I snap. It looked like a dragonfly showed up to suck on his body fluids that we'd spilled on the ground there. Hello, tortoise. The bloody, irritable tortoise, who has apparently seen battle on the other side of the map, finally lumbers over to us. We chop off his legs, and then drop him with one final stroke to his neck. We harvest ten star apple from that tree. A uh, bunch, of, bunch of bronze gear. How much star apple do I got? 48? My weight is 241. I'm going to pass a few more turns here. And then we're going to go to the world map and get back to exploring. 138 cooldown. Come on, tortoise. I got things to do. And you don't play into them. There we go. 18 rounds. Should be able to pass that fairly easy. There we go. And we failed to harvest anything useful from that tree. It was withered and dried. Oh, wonderful. My favorite thing, a salt hopper. You know what? I'm going to try to fight it. Some of you guys in the comments said that I should be able to take a salt hopper on. We'll see. We collide with the salt hopper. Just landing a massive blow. He's down to 5 hit points. We're down to 36. Eh, yeah, we can. Okay. And we butcher a salt hopper chips from him. Those delicious, crispy wafers 
that mother used to serve. Well, we've got a nice little cubby hole to hide in here. I think with that, we'll go to the world map. And we're over by the rust wells down here. I think that we will take off... Um, apparently we're lost. I was going to say we'll take off towards the... the um, the gate up there, but we're ambushed by Boro Huluf, the stalwart snapjaw, gut spiller. He's got a horn in his hand, a club, and he's wearing fancy crocusons. He hits us for one damage, getting our attention. We look at him with a devilish glare. We lunge and charge. Blow after blow rains down upon his body, and we drop to 18 hit points as we're swarmed by a bunch of his buddies. I am going to have to use a salve injector, I think. Yep. Let's apply that. A soothing tingle goes through our chest. And we get to work with that new rush of adrenaline, striking down the weaker snap jaws that had been nipping away at us earlier. So where is he at? He's right in front of us with 10 hit points. We've got a hunter and a... We get, he's got two hunters plinking arrows into us from almost point blank. We dispatch both of them, and then get back to him. He hits us twice, and it glances off of our armor. With our steel battle axe, we crumb, come down on his head with a, all of our might, splitting him in two. He drops cloth robe and a club, and we uh, pick up a bunch of stuff automatically. So they had a little bit of items for us, probably bracelets and stuff. Let's see what else. Iron short sword... Or iron longsword, I think it was. A willowy iron mace, I'll take that. Yeah, a lot of stuff here. Quilted shawls don't go for anything. They're a waste of my time, I believe. Steel short sword and an axe, I think. We'll take both of those. And, man, the horned chameleon gores us with its antlers from nowhere. We begin bleeding. And we dispatch him. Another snap jaw late to the party comes charging after us. And we're just going to rest until healed here. It's midnight now. And we're walking along with one hand, with our axe in our hand, and the other hand ready to grab our laser pistol if need be. Just got to find out where we are. We'll follow this road for a ways and see if we can find any signs that might point us in the right direction. That snapjaw had a fancy pocketed vest. Fortunately, I am I'm quite content with my clothing right now. We harvest 10 star apple from that tree, and no sooner do we do that and find a campfire than a snap jaw lunges after us. He drops an iron dagger. We'll take that and continue our way north. A seed spitter pisses off the Equimax behind us. They thunder forward on either side and stomp his ass into the ground and continue north butchering a boar along the way and savoring his meat and we regain our bearings wonderful a pack of feral dogs ambushes us and we're out of there we head to the northeast but we become lost in the mountains we instantly recognize this place however having been through here previously you can see the massacre we left behind Rotten bodies litter the place, their bones picked clean by vultures long ago. And glow moths too, probably. So let's see, a rusted archway. This is where we're going to explore next. It's 1 a.m. Looks like my torch has burnt out. And... Here, let's equip a lit torch there. Now, actually, I want to check out these rooms first. The giant centipede crawls out of the underground after us, and we chop him down, severing him to a dozen little pieces before we're finally done hacking his twitching corpse into the ground. And a 28 star apple. And we just burn through that stuff. So here we are, rusted archway compound, level one. The place smells like death and decay. And two boars are waiting down here with a whole group of hobos. We get to work hacking at the hobo while holding off the boar with our foot. What is he wearing? He's almost dead. He finally drops, and we squeeze through just to fall back immediately after. We butcher the boar, and his hermit handler charges forward. We completely obliterate him in a massive assault, and we butcher two boars. 
You know, let's just wait until we're healed here. We wait for a few hours until the soreness and fatigue of battle has run its course. And then we're back out. What do we got? Some brackish water there. Not really sure why I'm here. A two headed board charges after us. Say, I know for the sake of adventure we should explore this place, but at the same time. What's my experience? Gain 10 experience? Eh, this place isn't even really worth the experience. I doubt we're gonna find any good items. I am gonna actually, you know what? Screw this place. Don't wanna go there. Um, change of plans. Let's see. Where do we wanna go? I think we're gonna go up to Golgotha. Pretty sure we're gonna die there. We noticed some ruins to the northeast. Let's explore them. Let's see what we've got. I want to see what is in Golgotha. I believe it is fire-breathing ants. If it is, um, I don't think that we'll be staying very long, but I would at least like to check it out. There we go. I saw something. Oh, a slumber lane. We quietly open the chest, and it is loaded with carbide. There's a dagger, a hammer, a short sword, and a slender carbide dagger. We silently lift those out of the chest, and the slumberlene is none the wiser that we were there. Hey, we also found some star apples. Awesome. And they weren't rotten. Perfect. So is that the only little bit of loot for us here? It's only a shame that I'm not, I'm not really going to be able to use any of it, but it will get us a pretty penny if we find ourselves a merchant somewhere. Pass a few turns here. And then we're going to harvest this star apple tree. Try to, anyways. We completely fail in our attempt. The tree unable to give up its, its juicy fruit to us. A little snapjaw hunter was waiting inside the ruins there. And he falls against our blade as he tries to scramble out of the building. Wasn't going to let him slip by. Oh, got those ruins sorted out. And as we head to the north, we discover the lair of Arrowim. The legendary seed-spitting vine. Well, this is kind of new. I can't say I've ever found one of these creatures' legendary places. We're ambushed by a Snapjaw warrior who... puts up a little itty-bitty fight before we finally drop and destroy him. Where's the entrance to this place? I'm gonna go kill myself a legendary seed-spitter. We kill a tortoise along the way, apparently. He wouldn't take no for an answer when we told him to back up. So here we are, down in the lair of the beast. Dragonflies flit about the grass-filled tunnels, and another tortoise comes charging after us. Backed by a boar, and another giant dragonfly flutters around out there, making his presence known with every beat of his wings. Bones litter the grass, long since overgrown. Flowers grow between the rib cages. Hey, one of our buddy salt hoppers charges after us, and a tortoise approaches from the from the rear. The salt hopper finally drops. We raise our laser pistol and fire it at the tortoise. The shot goes wide. Um, you know we're gonna kill the boar first. Get ri get it off of our back there, and get to work on this tortoise that puts up one hell of a fight. We take the salt hopper chip and we crawl into a corner and doctor up our wounds there. More bone piles. Some of them fresher than others. That chest has long since been emptied out. Only cobwebs and dust are in it now. More bones. They're not all human. We're not going down just yet. I want to explore pretty much this entire area first. Nice little back alley there. Try not to get grabbed or rusted by kudzu. More bones and a couple dragonflies that land on the trees. A jilted lover tries to pull us into the wall there, slowly wrapping its long slender vines around our throat. We chop it down and continue on our way. Is there anything back here? Perhaps another way down? Equimaxes roam the tunnels here freely. 
apparently one at one and in peace with the seed spitter. Thankfully, they're not its guardian. If they are, we are going to be in more trouble than we can possibly imagine. Actually, you know what? Let's harvest this witchwood plant. We get two bark from it, and down we go. Um, whoops, that's the help key. Another tortoise comes charging out after us. We drop it, crushing it in its shell. And we're unfortunately unable to butcher any meat from it. A salt hopper sprints around the corner and slams into us, driving us backwards. We launch off of the wall and chop the salt hopper down and harvest some more of those delicious chips. A bone room. It looks like it's recently feasted in here. Something has. The stench is unbearable. And another salt hopper charges after us with a boar in tow. So, you know, we're going to go for the boar first. And then hope we have enough strength left in us to defeat the salt hopper. It's neck and neck. Uh, we raise our laser pistol and fire. It's down to one hit point. We're down to eight. We swing, knock it prone, and then we stumble backwards into the corner, collapsing from exhaustion. After we're done rusting, we walk over to the salt hopper and butcher it. Apparently, our blood feast has drawn the attention of Arrowim. He's made his presence known, and he begins shooting seeds at us. They bounce off of our armor. There he is, a vicious seed-spitting plant. He's got a carapace and a steel longsword equipped in one of his sentient vines. We step up, and the fight is on. We knock him down and then crush him like a daisy into a pile of nothing. He didn't even put up a fight. What a worthless seed spitter. You weren't genetically fit to continue. That tortoise was, though, man. He put up one hell of a fight. We butcher the boar and take some meat for our victory prize. Here's a chest. What do we got? Musket, iron buckler, and wooden arrows. You, wait, actually... I'm going to take the musket and... I should be able to break that down. Yeah, we'll disassemble that. And I think we got... I think that's scrap power systems. It's not dark enough to be phasic power systems. Unfortunately. So where is this downward stairs here? That'll lead down to his garbage lair. Or is this as low as his lair goes? He wasn't able to dig out and live in a very secure lair, apparently. Is there anything back this way? No. It's gonna map out every corner before we leave here. I'd like... If he has a garbage level, I would like to go collect some scrap in it. But apparently he doesn't. We find a boar corpse that we'd missed along the way and butcher that. And we're out of there. I think I missed a few places, but oh well. A bunch of dragonflies were perched on the ceiling there, upside down. Almost as if they've evolved to be bats down here in the cavey environment. Well, let's continue on our journey to Golgotha. 254, I don't have very much room left in my inventory. But we make it here, and it is 8 p.m. Well, mm, let's move down here, and we're just going to pass a few turns, actually. I'm going to wait until the sun starts to come up. And then we'll um, begin tiptoeing around Golgotha. I don't want to explore it at night because if there is a whole bunch of bad stuff there, I would prefer to see it from a distance without running face to face with it. For my previous attempts, I know that... Well, I believe that it is just fire-breathing ants. The sun should be coming up any time. So we get in position to start scouting out the place. And apparently a novice of the sightless way is around here. He sunders our mind from the northeast for two damage. We howl at him in anger and charge. You bastard trying to give me a headache? Who do you think you are? A massive building looms in front of us. It's got a steel intact security door. But before we can examine it further, a hide sheathed hermit jumps out of the bushes. 
screaming obscenities at us. We get to our grisly task of teaching him his manners. And a novice of the sightless way blasts us once. Man, that hermit put up a fight. It's wearing simple robes. The pilgrim's visage is surprisingly calm, giving the fact he is about to die a horrible death. We chop his head off and it lops onto the ground, rolling casually into a small ditch. So what is that? I have no idea what that is. We step into it and a chitinous puma slams into us for three damage. We step back. Where is it? Um, there's a chitinous puma somewhere in there, I think. For the time being, though, we've got a bloated leech charging after us. We nick him in a dozen places before he falls to the ground, squirting blood all over the place. Another leech, attracted to the scent, crawls out of the ground and comes charging after us. We perform the same maneuver on him, slowly dropping him from a dozen or more cuts. Um, so what is this? A slimy shaft. A wide, dark shaft whose chrome walls are coated with stinking, viscous scum. You hear splashing and the drone of conveyor belts below. I, I, I think I can jump onto that. I think that's what the puma did. I think the puma jumped onto that and fell somewhere. Well, we're going to be jumping onto that soon. There's another slime thing. We harvest ten star apple. And a novice of the sightless way tells us to halt. We do not oblige him. He drops a carbide short sword. After we dispatch of him. So is there any way into this building? Um, we'll go north and then come back down. Maybe not. What is that? Tarnished chrome. A wall of chrome tarnished with a turquoise patina. Patina? Um, uh, weight 239. I'm down to 15 star apples. Can I use recoilers underground? Um, I believe that I can. I've still got a, one full chem cell and one full solar cell. We're going down there. We're going to jump into one of these things. There we go. We step into it, and we slide. We fall down the shaft. Welcome to Golgotha Trash Shoots. Um, black gel takes five damage from acid. The chitinous puma misses us. Is my... My torch is out, isn't it? Yes, my torch had long since burned out. We light it. And there is a whole bunch of stuff around us. What is this? Shoot crab. So we've got a shoot crab back there. With a shell no larger than, larger than a human fist, this crab scuttles through a vent curiously suited to the dimensions of its figure. Often accompanied by dozens of its ghastly cousins, the jittering decapod means to devour all living matter it passes over. It's trivial, but there's probably a ton of them. There's one. Scratched vents. Tiny scratches cover the metal strips that rest between several horizontal vents cut from the tarnished chrome. We are on a conveyor belt. Putrid dross coats the black dye rubber belt that conveys waste toward the shaft at the end of the chute. I don't think I want to follow that. There's a pool of liquid, conveyor drive unit. This humming chrome engine powers the belt pulleys that convey waste through the chutes. Yeah, I don't think I want to follow that, that chute. And you, Puma, we raise our laser pistol at it and fire. I don't think we do very much damage to it. Is that a way off this conveyor belt? I think it might be. Oh boy, this is going to get real, real bad real quick. It already is extremely bad. There's a green gel there. It's tough. It's hostile. This animate sack of green goo rolls along the floor. Through the thin membrane that keeps it from spilling out of itself, you spot a shoal of eels swimming about. Well then, I should not have come down here, to be honest with you. Um, let's see, what else do we got? I don't... Mm, I don't have anything to heal except the Uber Nostrum here. 
I guess I do have Witchwood, but that is going to be a very, very, very last resort. Rubber Gum, I'm going to have to heal soon anyways. Let's see, let's throw... How about... We'll throw this Acid Grenade. We're hit. I'm going to have to use the Uber Nostrum right now. Because we are about to die here. So let's see, we will apply it. It hisses against our skin. A torrent of life rushes over us. And before it can heal us and we can explore anymore, we die. Killed by the Chitinous Puma. I, I waited too long. I was not expecting to be surrounded and clubbed down like that. Well, now I'm curious about Golgotha. Um, we will be coming back here at some point. I'm not going to be doing another true man, by the way. This is probably the last true man slash true human character that I'm going to do. Um, they they just take too long, in my opinion. They're, they're too straightforward. They're fun class to play if you want a slow, steady build-up and you want to use technology and stuff like that. But, um... I kind of like the randomness of some of the mutants that we can create, so... Hamilton Butters, you were a great character. A really great character. Had a lot of fun with you. But unfortunately, buddy, you're dead now. Rest in peace. Killed by a chitinous puma. Um, I'm probably going to actually retire this game for a while. I am going to be retiring most of the roguelikes that I'm playing for the time being for a while. Um, I've got some other projects that I want to focus on, and obviously I've got a lot on my plate right now with the, the Tales of the Mojave, the Arma 2, and the other playlists that I've got going on. Um, I don't feel like I can give the roguelikes the proper attention they require. They kind of require constantly being played, in my opinion, and um, whenever you take breaks, crazy, dumb things like this happen. So I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Who knows when that will be and who knows what that character will see.